Good morning, and welcome to Monday Mornings with Maria. What a beautiful day. It's such, the sun is shining. It looks like it's going to be a little warmer today, and um, so we can enjoy this glorious day. But what a wonderful weekend. Amen? Amen. Weekends are always great, you know. Men's Bible study. Some of us went to a retreat this weekend. And um, and then Pastor Miguel's message, good enough. That was a wonderful message. And, um, and so today, I just wanted to share, as you saw the title, Worship is My Weapon. And that was actually a word that was spoken to me this weekend by our key speaker and she was powerful. She was um, very anointed and powerful. And as uh, the altar, there was an altar call for all of the women to come on up and she was praying over women and speaking into their lives. And that's um, part of what she spoke to me. And she said it as she was speaking speaking to me she said it like you know two or three times that worship worship is my weapon worship is our weapon and it's for us to utilize amen so i just uh, wanted to share that this morning so i looked up okay worship worship so in the dictionary it says worship to honor or show reverence for a divine being or supernatural power to regard with great or extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. To perform in worship or an act of worship, like our praise and worship, our singing. Also, it's the way we live, live our lives. That's a reflection of God that brings honor to him, that shows respect and reverence unto our Lord. Amen. And in the Hebrew, the most common word for worship, because there are many words um, for worship, but the most common one is shaka, which means to bow down, bow down before God. And the Greek is proskunio, and that means to kiss the hand of a superior and also bowing down and laying prostrate. So kneeling before the Lord, you know, bowing down before him, showing reverence, bowing down. It shows reverence and it also is showing that we are submitting and surrendering to the Lord as in prayer, in worship. Amen. So I started looking and seeing, okay, worship is our weapon. So I have three examples for you um, that are in, in God's word. And, um, and uh, the first example that I have is is a young boy. And we all know the story of David and Goliath. And David used worship as his weapon. Amen. So we're in 1 Samuel 17. And we're uh, starting at verse 45. But as you read this story, and you know, Goliath is over there taunting the Israelites because they're not, they're, they're not coming against them because they see this giant. So when David says, I'll go, and you know, he has his slingshot and his rocks, and and Goliath is like, what? You're sending me this little kid? Give me a break, you know, and he's taunting them. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, you know, Maria's paraphrase of the story. But, you know, but he's taunting them. And Goliath is, it's probably like a joke to Goliath. You're sending me this this kid, you know. And so as as Goliath is taunting David, this is what David says in verse 45 of chapter 17, 1 Samuel 17, verse 45. David replied to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and javelin. But I, I come to you in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defiled. Today, the Lord will conquer you. And I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people. 
but not with the sword or the spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. Amen. It's the Lord's battle. So David is using worship, not singing worship, but he's declaring. He's giving honor to God. He's, he's reverencing God. He's, he's giving great respect and honor and devotion as he's declaring what his God is going to do. You came to me with, with a sword and a spear, and I'm coming to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And that's our weapon right there, right there. In the midst of the battle, calling on Jesus, calling on the Lord, because he will see you through. Amen? And then our second example, and, and, and I believe Kelly might have was share, shared this last week about the battle is not yours, but God's. And that's exactly why the battle is not ours, because worship is our weapon. And in Second Chronicles chapter 20, we see it. You know, here is King Jehoshaphat, and all these armies are coming against them. And, and, and they, there's no way they can fight this, this massive army because they are a small group of people. But it didn't matter because they sought their God. And in verse, uh, so this is Second Chronicles chapter 20, and I'm going to start at verse 21, 21 and 22. It says, after consulting the people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord, praising him for his holy splendor, and that is what they sang. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. And at that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Ammon Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. You see, they didn't have to lift a hand. It was their praise. King Jehoshaphat, had their worship team go out first before the army. That's the confidence that King Jehoshaphat had in his God, that God would see them through. And they didn't have to lift a finger. By the time they got to the battlefield, we all know all of the armies, not one single person was living. They all killed themselves because God caused that. But you see, they trusted in God. They knew who their God was. They knew there was no way they could go, up, go, bef go before this army. Just like David, he knew he was facing a giant who, had, who was a mighty warrior, you know, a soldier. But it didn't matter because he knew who his God was that his God was bigger and greater, just like King Jehoshaphat. And our third example is found in Acts chapter 16. And, the, the, and this story isn't, they're out in the battlefield. No, this is more on a personal nature. So we're, we're here with Paul and Silas, and we're in chapter 16. And Paul and Silas, just to give you a quick little background, you know, they're going through town, and they see this, this girl this slave girl who has a spirit, an, an evil spirit that, that foretells the future. She's a fortune teller. She tells the future, but men were utilizing her as a money maker. They were using her to tell people's future, for people to pay for their future to be told. Well, Paul and Silas just saw that this girl had um, this evil spirit within her, so they prayed it out of her. So, of course, the people weren't happy. But anyways, long story short, it created a mob, and they, um, they had them put in prison because of what they did. So here we are at verse 25, Acts 16, verse 25. And it was in the midnight hour. That midnight hour is a very powerful time. But around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And other prisoner, other prisoners were listening. Okay, so remember that other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations, and all the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Not just Paul and Silas, 
but all the prisoners were set free there, were set free. But then the story goes on because the guard who was, who there was a guard stationed right outside Paul and Silas's uh, prison cell. Now, uh, I did forget to mention that Paul and Silas weren't just placed in prison. They were placed in the inner dungeon, it says. They were way deep in the prison so that they couldn't escape. And then they assigned a guard to also guard them in their locked cell. But that didn't matter. God still broke those the, the prison doors open and all the shackles fell. And the guard was ready to kill himself. And Paul and Silas were like, no, 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 no. So the guard saw and believed in God because of what he, because how God set them free. And then the guard took them home and the guard was saved and his family was saved. So see, in the midst of our battle, as we're trusting God, people are watching and people are listening just like the prisoners were listening to Paul and Silas as they praised and they worshiped God. Here were men who probably, all the men are probably, you know, horrified that they're in prison but not Paul and Silas. They were praising and worshiping God because no matter what, their trust was in God. Just like Jehovah, King Jehoshaphat, his trust was in God. Just like David as a young boy, his trust was in God. And they were worshiping him regardless of their situation, regardless of their circumstances. They were worshiping their God because they knew who their God was. And we, as we know who our God is, he is a mighty God. He's a powerful God. He's a loving God. He's a God who saves, who heals, who delivers, who opens those doors for us so that we can remember, so we can remember worship. Worship is our weapon. And always remember that God inhabits the praises of his people. So when you are in your car praising God, he's with you. When you are in your prayer closet praying and worshiping, no, no, without a shadow of a doubt, God is with you. He is with you. He is with you. Giving you all that authority and all that power because it's within you. Because he lives and dwells within you. So my friends... I just want to encourage you to always remember worship is our weapon. So utilize it. Utilize it. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you, Father God. We thank you because, because of your love for us, because you are always with us, because you inhabit the praises of your people, Father God. So, Lord, I thank you that you equip us and you give us the weapons of our warfare and even worship, Lord God. We don't have to have swords and spears. We just need to have our voice to praise you, to worship you, to glorify you, to lift up our hands in sweet surrender so that we can just bask in your presence and allow you to speak to us. Because through our worship, you speak to our hearts. Through our worship, you strengthen us. Through our worship, there's your peace that, is, that, that calms us down. That peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you, Lord God, that you are always there. And that you are you go before us and you fight those battles and you make ways, Lord God, where there are no ways. So I lift up my brothers and sisters to you and I lift up their needs to you, Lord God. I lift up their situations and their circumstances, the battles that are going on, Lord God, that you would reveal yourself to them in such a mighty way that they would just surrender unto you and trust in you. Like David, King Jehoshaphat, and Paul and Silas. They didn't look at their circumstances. They looked to you. So Lord, help us to always look to you. And we, just get, and we will always give you praise, honor, and glory. 
as we worship you, as we bow down before you and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining me this morning. And let's see who's on. So good morning, Alfredo and Christine, RJ and Georgia. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Renee. Happy Monday. Yes, happy Monday. Good morning, Kim. Uh, looks like you had an awesome time on that cruise. So so I'm I'm very happy that you had that opportunity. Amen. Amen. So good morning, Mary and Joe. And look, there's my husband. Good morning, honey. And good morning, Rose and Dee and Lori. Thank you for, for joining us. And um, yes, God rescues us in the depths of battle and despair as we as we attune to him and worship him. Amen. 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 Yep. That's how we fight our battles. That's right. Putting on, yes, put by putting on the garment of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Good morning, Janice. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Good morning, Brother Ron. And good morning, Vera. Good morning, Kevin. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for the miracles that God has done in Kevin's life. Amen. The healing that he's doing and for Nancy too. Amen. Praise the Lord. We continue to keep you guys in prayer. Good morning, Chelsea. And good morning, Imelda. And I think that's about everybody, but thank you for joining me. And if I missed you, if I missed and not and didn't call your name, forgive me, but I just pray you have an absolutely wonderful day in Jesus and, uh, and a beautiful week. So God bless you. And don't forget, weapon, worship is our weapon. Amen. God bless you.